Well, I strongly feel that there are many things in a community that really make a sense of community and also create the quality of life that families come to expect and want um, from their cities. And Renton River Days epitomizes uh, what community is all about. It brings people together for several days of fun, um, thousands of people enjoying the downtown area with the parade and the, the activities in the park and the music and it's, it's very festive and, and it's something that, uh, you know, for decades now people have come to look forward to. Uh, the history of uh, Renton River Days uh, goes something to the effect that um, there were many community events happening in our, in our uh, community at that time and the city felt like there was a need for something larger to be put together that included all of those events. And so we, I think there was a steering committee put together and Renton River Days was born and um, I think has been successful since then. I was the first coordinator of Renton River Days and it was back in 1985 when the city of Renton did an economic study. On the, uh, Renton was not considered a wonderful city back in those days. It really did not have a very good uh, reputation and we decided that it was time for that to change. And so an economic study was done to see what we could do to showcase the city of Renton. And the economic uh, people that did this said that the Cedar River was a wonderful amenity for our city and all of the parks and the waterways and that we should really emphasize those. And that one of the good things we should do is maybe have a festival and draw all the people of Renton together to just be proud of what their city had to offer and to join together and and enjoy that. And so that was the beginning of the thought for Renton River Days. The mayor, Barbara Shimpo at that time, was very interested in having all of the events that were happening in Renton happen in one week, which were, there was a run and there was the parade and there was the downtown uh, Renton Western Days Festival what happened with all these different events was that every time there was an event in Renton, we had to call on the police department, the fire department, the parks department. I think my first thing that started is I was a captain in the Renton Police Department in charge of all the operations. And one year, and I think it was back in 1985, we were blocking off Third Avenue for parades about three parades a year in the summertime and none of the parades took more than a five or ten minutes to go down the street. For that we were paying a lot of overtime, it was very expensive. So I had a conversation with then Barbara Shimpo, the mayor, and suggested to her, I says, couldn't we consolidate this all into one week and the city would then support all the activities during that week? And she said, that's a good idea. And so Mike Parnass, who was the uh, assistant to the mayor at that time, Barbara Shimpo, Mayor Barbara Shimpo, just a wonderful lady, was given the task of developing the festival. Anyway, I said, Mike, what can I do to get the arts involved in the festival? And Mike said, well, we definitely want the arts involved but I am so overwhelmed, I really don't know what I'm going to do. I think I'm going to have to get an intern from the University of Washington. Well, my three sons were all grown, and Jim was working at Boeing, so I had time on my hands, and I said, Mike, how about me? And Mike said, that's a good idea. Why not? So he hired me part-time, and we started the festival. And at our very first meeting in January of uh, what well, would have been 1986, there were 12 people around the table. It was people like Pat Newberry at McDonald's and Don Person from the police department and Tony Nelson from the flower shop and Parks people, Bonnie Rarisich and uh, Jerry Cavish from Renton Western Wear, Tom Helene from Boeing. And we just started brainstorming. What can we do? When that meeting took place, 
we, uh, we all decided, yeah, we thought it was a good idea. And we would capture the weekend with the Long Acre Smile. So the very first year, we had our banquet at Long Acres. And at Long Acres, they had their mile in August. So that was why in the beginning, we started having the festival in August. So the kickoff banquet was on, uh, was on Tuesday. We always did it that day because we always had Wednesday be Children's Day. So on Children's Day, all the activities were in Liberty Park. We then reserved Thursday for seniors. And they had the, uh, the luncheon. And then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, it was all in the park. So then the question was, well, what should we call this festival? And Bonnie Rarisich and Tony and I were talking, and we talked about how the economic development people uh, said we should emphasize the waterways. And Bonnie, I'm sure, was the one that said, well, how about Renton River Days? And our board, which we had developed at that time that we called the steering committee, said, good name. And that's how it started, and that's how I was involved as the River Days coordinator for eight years. When we started Renton River Days, we felt that we needed to have a logo, a, a, a symbol, something that would just make people think of Renton River Days. And we thought, well, what should that be? And Tony mentioned this artist that she know, knew. His name was Doug Kyes, that had done some cute little cartoon drawings for a golf tournament. And she wondered if maybe he could come up with something. And I said, Doug Kyes, you know Doug Kyes? He's an internationally renowned artist. He works for Boeing and does amazing retirement pictures for vice presidents just a very talented fellow. And I said, you think we can get Doug Kyes to do this? And so she said, yeah, I think so. And so we took Doug Kyes to the restaurant at the hotel that was then down where the Red Lion is and just talked to him and told him what we wanted. And he always accused us of sneaking him away into a little tiny dark place and talking him into signing this contract to help us with the uh, River Day's logo, but then he went off and drew these marvelous cartoons and we came up with this little red-headed boy who just became the symbol of Renton River Days. I knew Doug Kyes from uh, being on the Renton Area Youth Service Board. He remembered a young boy that lived in his neighborhood. He always remembered him because he had freckles and so he decided he would do kind of a caricature of that little boy for uh, the Little River Boy. So that was how we got the Little River Boy. And then a couple years later, Doug decided, well, the Little River Boy needs a Little River Girl. So he made the Little River Girl with her pigtails and was so cute. Well, I did the posters. And uh, I, I did a few uh, handouts. Uh, posters were the big things. Uh, they asked for uh, the river boy. To, so we made him the main character. And uh, I sort of invented the girl because I had one of each boy and the girl, and uh, so we used the two of them. Well, it was hometown. Yeah, then yeah. uh, the Boeing factory was here, and I was working for Boeing, and uh, it was very important to me. In fact, I had to walk down the halls of Boeing, and they would all ask me about the river kids. What, what are they going to do this year? or what to do the next year. Yeah, I'm sorry that they're gone. Uh, I kind of enjoyed them. <laughs> we always started off with a banquet to start the early Renton River Days. The other thing is that we always had a closing event sort of like they do at the Olympics where uh, everybody came together for one group at, on Sunday evening. 
and we had the, the band play and then we closed with we did various things skydivers came in one year uh, one year we had fans for everybody little lights for everybody just something that just sort of signified the closing of the festival for that year and getting ready to start the next year and now there are just so many many more events than there were at that time uh, I, I just couldn't even begin to name them and, and the number of people uh, that they attend I think has also grown so it has changed a lot but it has never lost its sense of being a family festival and I that was something we always uh, emphasized at the beginning this was a family festival and it was a place where people came together for reunions and just the joy of being together and I I'm so glad that it still has that ambiance. It's just warm and welcoming. And another part of that very first uh, couple of years of Renton River Days was the finance group. What we wanted were several people, different organizations, different businesses to sponsor River Days because our thought was if we had one big sponsor and they pulled out, then we would be without a sponsor. When we first started Renton River Days, it was a two-day event and we tried to convince the uh, Renton City Council that we could do this uh, on about a $10,000 budget. And the Renton Council said, okay, it, we will give you $6,000 if you can match it. And then they looked at, somebody ever looked at Shar and me and says, now you guys got to go out and raise 10000 because we had to match it. And we did, not, we, we did not think we would be able to do it. And we, but we did in a very short period of time. We had a guy on the board from a Pepsi dis distribution company and they came up with five. And I think, if I remember correct, we got five out of uh, Renton Rotary. And that we got that, and then a lot of other people donate. I mean, there's so many businesses that that donated, made it possible. That it was uh, it was a fun time. It was interesting, and it's been interesting to watch it grow. I guess I'll start at the beginning, uh, way back in what was it, 1993, or a little bit before that. I was invited to be on the uh, was a fundraising committee, and I eventually was chair of that committee and a guy named Chuck Tiernan and I uh, really kind of blossomed that committee and, and broadened the, uh, the scope and reach of uh, River Days into the, I will call it the corporate community, uh, community or the business community. I mean to the extent that more Chuck than me but we went and got IKEA as part of a, a, of a sponsorship and uh, from there we, uh, we grew it even more broad-based, uh, of which I'm very proud of even today. Then I was on the board, was invited to be on the board, so I was on the board for a while, then chair of the board, and because I'm an accountant by training and by profession, um, um, I was treasurer and am today the treasurer of, of River Days. So I've served in many capacities. Terry Scapini was the daughter of uh, Barbara Shimpo, the mayor at that time, and Terry agreed to be the coordinator for the uh, food concessions. And so we brought all the restaurant folks together to propose to them what we were going, what we wanted, and would they consider uh, being a part of that. And Terry said to them, well, you know, this is going to be just sort of a small event compared to the Bite of Seattle in Renton. And we were sort of thinking about calling it the nibble of Renton. What do you think about that? And there was just dead silence in the room. The restaurant people just obviously didn't think that was a great idea. And Terry said, OK, moving on. <laughs> but the steering committee thought it was a grand idea, and so it became the nibble of Renton. The whole idea of the Renton River Days at the start was to bring the community together the festival's family oriented and it brings people together uh, and over the years 
If you go down for the Nibble of Renton, you'll see people coming every year. They sit around and they meet old friends that they haven't seen for a year or so. So it's, that's, I think that's the importance. So the Nibble of Renton, we try to stay with uh, Renton based companies, um, you know, food providers. So we go out and ask them to return. Most of them are, have been with the festival for a long time. Um, you get a nice variety of food and just we try to keep everything taking the customer and the per people in mind you know to have nice diversity since burgers and fries but also you know your sweet things and um, dogs and just everything to come and enjoy so yeah I help with the application process and to see that we have a nice variety and people that we trust and hopefully from Renton. As you know I'm, I'm part of the Tony Nelson clan and, uh, and as part of that, um, you, um, you join in to the activities that are important to that group. To wit, uh, river days of what I call my era, which would be my children. During that era of those kids being young, um, along with Kimberly's other sisters, We'd put a blanket out at River Days beginning on uh, Saturday morning, and we hung out there. We ate dinner there, we, our lunches and so on there. You talk about wholesome, it's having all of your kids around you, all your nieces and nephew around you, playing games, going over to, to the kids' activities, going to, to the nibble for lunch and letting the kids have whatever they wanted. Uh, it was great fun. <laughs> the rubber duck derby was very interesting. We had a, first of all, it was the American Heart Association came to the River Days and wanted to uh, have a rubber duck race in Renton. So, Shar and I went to Renton Rotary and asked them to buy 10,000 rubber ducks. And then we went out and solicited like the dinner train for prizes for the rubber duck tickets and Rotary helped sell them. Uh, but all the money that was proceed, uh, proceeds from that went to the American Associ Heart Association. And we thought we had a really good partnership with them. And then all of a sudden they changed directors and the directors said, uh, you can't have the dinner train as a sponsor. I mean, we had the tickets printed, we were selling them, and he says, you can't do that because the winery in Woodenville is owned by American Tobacco. Long story short, uh, Bob Macbeth and Char and a couple other people negotiated. We gave them half the ducks. We had, I think, 10,000 ducks, and they gave, we kept 5,000, they kept. 5,000 and that's where Rotary then started running the rubber duck races and then all the money from the rubber duck race went to basically uh, all the local charities through through Renton Rotary. A lot of people thought that we that Rotary hired people to uh, take care of this event and the duckies and that's not true it's all Rotary all organized by Rotary and all of the Rotarians are involved from storing those little ducks in, in garbage cans out at a, a garage out near Lake Kathleen to uh, setting up the tent and selling the tickets and making sure all those little duckies have their stickers and it's a lot of hard work but it brings in maybe sixteen thousand dollars for a uh, rotary and it's just been a very very popular event that sort of is helping wind up River Days on Sunday of the event. Funniest thing about all that is the first race that we put on, we had to catch all the ducks, obviously. And they, we thought they would just gather behind the, the oil boom. Well, that didn't work. All these ducks went over and under the oil boom, and we had thousands of ducks going past us. And luckily, everybody in the crowd, we had a whole bunch of young kids and young adults just jumped into the river. And we, I think we, we, we didn't get all of them, you know, maybe 100 ducks, but 
they got away, but they, we were able to capture all those ducks. So the progression of, of the, where, they, where we started to where we are today with the, the, the capture net, and that was finally that design was uh, by Joanne Lee, believe it or not. She's the one that came up with that, and then we've refined it over the years. So it, it's quite a feat to capture 5,000 ducks, let me tell you. And I think the funnest thing of the whole festival, when I'm thinking back on it, is standing on that bridge, cutting the ropes to the fishnet that those 5,000 ducks are in and watch them float down. There used to be a, an event that the um, Renton Annual Art Show people put on down. At that time it was called the Sears Shopping Center and it was outside and it was a yearly event and um, artists presented their works. They were juried and prizes were given and we just thought it was very important that they become a rent, part of Renton River Days. Mike Purness and I and I think maybe Don Person went to the Renton Annual Art Show people and made our presentation to them and said, look, we can put you in the Renton Community Center. You'll be sheltered from all the rain that you've had to worry about. Your artwork will be safe. You won't have to worry about it being stolen. So it took us a couple of visits to convince them, okay, they'd give it a try. And of course, the rest is history. They've been in the uh, uh, Community Center all of these many, many years. and the. Uh, event has grown. All of those folks on that committee work hard all week to prepare it and it's just a gentle, wonderful, professional part of the uh, festival, this uh, delightful. Renton River Days came to us and invited us to be part of the festival and we moved to the Renton Community Center which has been super valuable for us because it's a secure area, um, it's not subject to any you know vagaries of the weather, it's a comfortable environment for people to visit artwork and it's just been great for us. Well within Renton River Days I have been involved as the chairman of the Renton Annual Art Show for I'm going to guess 20 years, probably involved with that organization for 27. And as chairman of that show, I was um, invited by Chuck Tiernan, who was then the uh, board president of Renton River Days, to become part of the board. And I've been part of the board now for 17 years. And you know, being part of the Renton, or excuse me, um, the Renton Annual Art Show for so long, um, I have just really realized the value that that event brings just on its own. And when we talk about you know exposing um, not only our older citizens but our kids, our children to arts of that level, you know, it's so critical for a community like ours to have that. As far as the chalk art is concerned, that was an event conceived by a lady on the uh, Allied Arts of Renton board who had seen chalk art in other places. And when Allied Arts started with it, it was in downtown Renton in the Piazza area. But the parade was like a Pied Piper. Everybody would just sort of follow the parade into uh, Liberty Park. And so we didn't have very good attendance or at our chalk art in downtown Renton and so we said okay maybe we need to do it in Liberty Park and eventually we ended up uh, doing it on the tennis courts. The thing I like the most is the parade because you at one point in time you bring thousands of people to you know the downtown core lining up the the streets to cheer on uh, you know different organizations and groups that are are performing and, and showing off you know what it is that they do and the kids are having fun and it's just an event where it just seems like everybody has a smile on their face and they're having a good time you know this would probably be one of the more common answers but if I had to pick a favorite part it would probably be the parade and I'm sure you'll hear that from a lot of people my first experience with River Days was a high school student uh, at Hazen High School participating in the parade in the Renton All School Marching Band. But there's something just very genuine, American, I mean, parades are not unique to the United States, but there's something special about small town parades in America. And everybody loves a great parade. And to get up on a Saturday morning and come down 
with beautiful weather and watch the parade and watch the kids and the interaction of people is, that's the best part. This was a hard question for me because I love the food, but then I, I mean, the parade for me is where you get to see everybody, the whole like community coming together and all our diversity and all the um, just, you know, little ones as well as older generations just enjoying the same event. Um, I remember as a little one, um, my parents bringing me and it was so much fun and those are the memories that I, I still carry along with me. I think I'll stick with the parade. I can remember being very first involved with River Days, you know, back when it started and gathering in front of my mother-in-law's flower shop, setting the chairs out, putting the blankets out, um, coffee in the back room with maybe a little titch of something something and watching the parade and it was just so enjoyable. So my favorite part of Renton River Days was last year's Chief for a Day where we select an individual um, to be the Chief for a Day and they ride through the parade in a police car with their a magnet on the side of the police car that says Chief Four Day. He's got a uniform, he's got a badge, a hat, and to see the look on his face um, was full of excitement. And he waved and he owned that part as far as Chief. And, uh, you know, he pointed out some violations along the way that, uh, you know, maybe we should look into later. But uh, he was just absolutely um, thrilled with that. And that was my favorite moment. I, I'm very proud of our uh, involvement with the parade as far as the honor guard. I think they, they've they trained, they've practiced, you know, this is a, a voluntary group that has put in the time. Um, we've provided these, these fantastic uniforms, they just look sharp, and with all the practice and training, they lead that route, um, they do a lot of special events, but one of their favorites is definitely the parade. Well, it started uh, with the entertainment committee uh, back in 1906. Uh, 30 about 32 years ago, actually. So I, um, I've done entertainment. I've done stage logistics for years. Um, ended up becoming the pseudo MC. Uh, not sure how that happened, but it did. When we're in the sound booth and, and we had the music going, it's a chance to get to see people walk by. And people are having fun. They've, they've forgotten about any of the troubles they've had. Kids are having a good time. I lo love the music um, and um, look forward to the Junior Cadillac closing um, band, I guess you'd say, and, and seeing everybody up and dancing and being a part of a community and enjoying it. And it isn't just the kids doing that, it's people you know, my age, if you will, um, and rock and roll inspires people to do that. <laughs> so I think what's most interesting is we can go from a 70s rock band to jazz to a solo entertainer to Kent's Little Jim to cloggers to Mexican folklore to the two con steel drummers to you name it. And I think what we've tried to do over the years is have as diverse a lineup as possible. I think we've done a really good job of that. It's important for the city to create the sense of place and the, uh, having events and having festivals and parades and uh, those types of events just gives you a sense of community. And I think it just is an element that while you can't compare it to providing public safety, which is a paramount priority, uh, quality of life goes well beyond the roads and utilities and police and fire and you know providing great parks, trails and events is a strong component of what makes a great community. Many of the departments do their part of, uh, of providing the resources and support so that an event of this magnitude can happen. And it, it goes the full gamut from public safety to uh, transportation issues and how you deal with, with cars moving through the city when you're closing down streets to providing parking for the thousands of people who come down and take care of the event. There's setup, there's takedown, there is um, preparing the parks and public areas uh, so that they, are, they look really good to the visitors and the public that come down for 
uh, those several days of events. Um, like you said, it absolutely takes a village. Um, so we do have police, fire, public works, um, and some of our other departments, but community services is, um, if you will, the larger organization of um, how the, the uh, event comes together. So within community services, we have recreation, which provides not only the facilities, but a lot of the programming within um, the community um, event. Uh, parks is huge with the setup. So not only is it the week of, it's weeks prior to start prepping the park parks, because we have uh, two separate parks that we utilize. Um, making sure that you know irrigation's turned off, so we're not firing off on on our community. Um, the setup so that they are actually helping vendors come in, marking out stalls, making sure we have electricity available. Uh, the all of the grandstand setup, um, it's it's huge. Uh, we also the facilities team is helping coordinate all of our um, portalettes and things like that that come in, making sure that our exterior uh, restrooms are ready to go every day and throughout all of the the event so it's you know 24 7 in the park and then we also have um, within the park so not only is it during the event which is 11 to 8 most of the days 11 to 6 on Sunday um, we have overnight security so there's things because there's a lot of things that are left in the park so we've had our parks teams help out we've had public works help out and obviously the police are um, out there as well Yes, our command staff regularly meets uh, once a year uh, before the event, or more than once a year uh, before the event, to kind of plan and strategize the safety element of the park. And that has to do with tra you know parking, traveling to and from, overnight stays. You have a lot of vendors that set up at night and a lot of guests that come in. And it's really the responsibility of the police department to, to make them feel safe and to put themselves out there at night so they can see them, do walk arounds. Um, so it's more than just uh, just traffic. Uh, it's it's the, the element of feeling safe, whether you're at the park visiting or if, it, if it's after hours. So. Uh, some of the things we do for the parade itself are we set up the route, that, which is pretty common, but we set up officers at each intersection to kind of hold back traffic so that nobody interferes or gets in the way of the, the event. For many years we've participated in the, the parade, whether it's police vehicles or SWAT vehicles or special equipment, motorcycles have gone through the parade, but most recently um, I've been lucky enough to have the chief for a day um, right through the parade and we've led the Comic-Con or Rencon, excuse me, uh, parade float which has won the last two years. So some of the activities that the police department does at River Days, which is just beyond the, you know, either pre emergency preparedness or the safety element which we do provide it's really again that community engagement of putting us in civilian clothes or putting out our equipment so people that can see that kind of a transparency thing um, but the fingerprinting of, of kids has always been a really big uh, hit with with parents that want to have their kids um, uh, some of the involvement you know the photo booths that we now set up with the uh, the officers and the and the children um, they can take their pictures, put on funny masks and things like that. They can uh, tour through the equipment, whether it's a big you know, SWAT vehicle or something like that. It's a lot of fun and it's something that we've really been trying to do as far as the community engagement piece and get out there and show people that we're more than just the police department. You know, that we, we do have families, we, we are part of the community, um, answering questions, uh, being proactive as far as our involvement with what's going on in our own city. Um, our fire authority now, same thing, is really you know, wanting to be more in community engagement and listening to what they're saying. Um, and all the rest of the city department teams that are involved as well. You know, Public Works closing the streets down. They closed both um, Hauser Way for the, you know, for the uh, nibble and all the offload and inload stuff that comes in from the park, but also for the parade. And there's a lot of logistics that go on with that. And, and new members of all of the city staff they get to see what community feels like. We're all working really hard to do our jobs, but when we have a community festival like this, it brings all of our teams together. So I think that's uh, the engagement portion is really big. Well, without the city support, it died to start with. We I mean, be very blunt about it. But it's important because it shows that the city values family and community and wants to put on a good front and have a good party for, for its citizens. So it's absolutely necessary that the city stay involved and uh, the city reaps the rewards from the partnerships that are uh, developed with the, through the festival. It reaps more rewards with its citizens feeling that, hey, 
we're part of something. And I think that's very important that the city provide uh, and use our tax dollars wisely. And I think this is a very wise uh, choice to put money into re Rent River Days. Of course, um, we have tremendous help from the city. It's um, well, unmatched, I think, for, from uh, different festivals. But yeah, we have, um, well, the, just the police department, the parks department, the, everybody. It's just a partnership that without one or the other, I think, you know, this festival could not, well, I know that it could not uh, be a successful one without all the help. The collaboration between the city of Renton and Renton River Days is really a, a, a very nuanced dance, for a lack of a better way to put it. Um, from the public's perspective, it's the city's festival. The reality is the city of Renton provides tremendous resources. We could not do this without the city's help. However, we are responsible for, as a board, as a nonprofit, for the financial aspects of it, the programming. Uh, getting people to the park and giving them a festival that people want to return to which maintains that sustainability. We have to go to the city and kind of say what can we do, what can we not do. We have to have not so much that the city tells us exactly what to do but we have to have their blessing for certain things and it creates this somewhat symbiotic relationship that can sometimes be a little awkward especially to a new board member. Uh, but at the same time, uh, we wouldn't be here with, without both organizations working hand in hand to make this festival work. The city staff, the parks, the recreation, all the people that spend the three solid days that I do in the park really, really do make it happen. Every day the park's cleaned up. It just looks great. And we couldn't do it without the city. Well, our board has worked very hard, He's, um, have always worked very hard just to keep uh, trying to keep uh, the festival going. There's a lot of things we do talk about and some of these questions, you know, are hard to, to answer and, you know, what do we do to keep sustainable and um, how do we keep spon sponsorship up in, in a changing environment. Um, you know, we have talked about, you know, adding things where the customer might have to pay to play or pay to make um, while keeping the majority or a lot of the festival for free or things, activities for free. Um, that's very important to us. Um, evolving, um, maybe adding the beer and wine garden for, you know, a little grown ups and just kind of just to have a little bit more, more diverse demographic in the park, not just little ones um, having all the fun, maybe grown-ups too. <laughs> the sustainability of Renton River Days has been something that's been a big issue for a while. And the general public doesn't always realize this. While the city provides a lot of resources to make River Days happen, we are still an independent board with our own budget and our own fundraising needs. And as a result, sustainability has been a big issue. It's been tough the last few years as sponsorship has changed, economics of sponsorship have changed. Uh, people want more tangible things for their sponsorship dollars or their advertising dollars than they have in the past. And as a result, we've had to look at new ways to keep the festival afloat financially. Well, many businesses locate here because they uh, they, you know, feel that Renton is a great place to bring their work, their workforce. It's a great place for people to live, um, and so they're here. They're, they're making a major investment here. Supporting local events through sponsorships allows uh, a lot of the quality amenities that we try to offer the community to continue and to exist. And uh, we have been blessed in this community to have tremendous corporate partners that. You have sponsored many of the events, not only River Days, but our school projects and a number of other things that we do on an annual basis. But um, it, I'd encourage any business that's here to figure out what fits for you and to get involved. It is uh, without question becoming more of a challenge each year 
to find ways to ensure that we can fund the festival, to uh, keep the programming at a level that, that we've been used to for all of these years. There's so many different things that impact what companies are doing to help support through sponsorships, through individual sponsorships and so on. So I think as, as part of the board, each year we get together in an annual retreat and we evaluate the entire festival. We try to come up with new ways of bringing a, maybe a new spark to the festival and still maintaining, at least for me as, as a longtime board member, that underlying, this is for the city of Renton. This is a family oriented based situation. History is amazing um, and how it has uh, changed and morphed through the years um, where a lot of the community who are here in Renton all the time want to hang on to what we've done over the years and that's good. I mean there's a lot of things that we do want to hold on to history and educate the new members or the new families that are coming in. Um, the morphing though is uh, what we're hearing so I think one of the good things that the festival does is survey constantly, not only during festival, but before and after as well. Uh, we reach out to council, we reach out, again, multicultural task force, um, a lot of different groups that we try to get feedback from. So we are representative of what um, our city would like to see. And we've noticed um, things where I've talked about the young kids, that it's really nice to see what they can participate in during the festival, but we're not, um, we're working hard at reaching the teenage years that um, you know we want to get them active so it's not always you know working on their cell phones and their you know playstations whatever that's a really old term but um, those kind of things but getting them active in the park and so they realize and you know, we have a skate park we have baseball fields we have basketball courts all the things that you know kids should be doing staying active and playing outdoors how do we continue to keep the festival going and bring that type of programming and we're going to have to look at alternatives. It might be a pay-for-play scenario for some of the activities that we bring in that are maybe a little bit more special. It's all things that we're having to continue to look at, but the, it's important, I think, the city has told us, told the board, that Renton River Days continues to be viable. We'll see some new things over the next few years. Uh, one of the things that we, we talk about internally is River Days 2.0. Uh, a new River Days that brings together what we've done in the past and ties that to new ways of keeping River Days alive, keeping it sustainable. Uh, I don't know if I'm supposed to share this, but you'll see a beer and wine garden this summer, which has been one of the most requested uh, features of, of the festival for a long time. Uh, when we look at the various surveys and stuff, which we do take very seriously, uh, that's one of the things that comes up quite often. And we had been one of the few festivals that had not gone down that road yet. So I think continuing to work with the city and collaborating there on how we can keep the level or expand our programming. We're at three days. Do we go to less days to make it easier and staff? Those things that we have to look at bottom line is keeping the festival as viable as we can. I love the volunteerism. I love the feel. Again, I mean, I'm going to stress community so much. I love the feel of volunteerism, not only with, the, um, with our River Days board, but truly what happens in the park. For me personally, being a Renton resident, born and raised, uh, it's, it's a huge deal that this takes place and, and what it means to Renton, because it is a partnership between the community and the city. Um, a lot of people think that this is straight city, you know, uh, run, but this is a community event that is largely run by um, volunteers that, that offer their time and their, and their um, experiences to try and make this a great event. So for me to be part of Renton and my friends and family, um, it, it's well represented and, and, and I'm proud that we have this opportunity to have the food, the art. Um, the shows that take place. Um, I would encourage people to get involved because it is a satisfaction, there's a personal satisfaction in helping to execute something that's so critical and so impressive to our community. And when you, I mean, it's hard work, but at the end of the day, you've done something really special. And you can say, 
to yourself, wow, look what we did. And so just a, there, just a little short story. So I, I, I was on my way to um, volunteer at the, or the um, information booth. And before going to the information booth, I went to the grocery store. Before going to the grocery store, I had all of my River Days pins and I love renting and everything. And I went to the grocery store and there were like three people at the store that thanked me that day for helping put on the event. And I thought, wow, that's really nice that people recognize, first of all, they read it and then they, then they recognize how valuable the event is for our community and thanked me for, for my participation. It is a rewarding uh, experience because it's for our community and our community is ever more important as it grows and becomes more and more a vital part of the greater King County. Um, so being involved is a good thing, it's a rewarding thing, it certainly has been for me. Being a part of Renton River Days is a lot of work but it's also great fun and so I would encourage anybody that wants to make a difference in our city and have a lot of fun and meet a lot of wonderful, passionate, uh, city-loving people at the same time to get involved and they won't be sorry. I think getting volunteers for anything anymore is a little harder. I think that uh, there are a lot of people that don't realize they can be involved. And I think that is probably more of it than anything else, is that people think that this is put on, there's a group of people that puts it on, and that's all that's necessary. Once people get involved, and then they like it. I remember one gal from North Renton that volunteered with that, and I believe now she chairs that. And you just have to hook them the first time. Once you hook them the one time, then I think they always come back. And I think they certainly enjoy it. Whether it's youth soccer, whether it's Renton River Days, whether it's the car show, all of it depends on people's involvement and depends on people stepping up and volunteering. And if there's ever a time to do it, the time is now. Because these festivals, these events may disappear with a lack of community involvement. For me, um, being involved in a community event that's been run this long, it's priceless for me because it's just like you can see how the, the history and all the people that are involved, I mean if you look at the longevity of, of people that are involved, it's, it's outstanding. The city, the people in the city, all the volunteers, we're in it because we love it. So with 2020 coming up, uh, and it being our 35th festival, our 35th anniversary, we really want to showcase the city. We want to bring some new things and really celebrate 35 years. So if you have an idea, you have a group that you're involved with that you want to be a part of the festival, you have even just some generic ideas of what you would like to see a 35th celebration look like. Reach out, fill out a comment card at a minimum, let us know, email us, come sit in a board meeting, volunteer for a position, get involved, help make this what you think it should be.